It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. This is Expresso. You're live on S3 and every person's dream when they are little is to be one of these incredible individuals. And I'd say that if you have any kids, in fact, if you are a big fan of firefighters, you're going to love this. Bring him in. <laughs> Behold, firefighters. We promised you action and here they are. Lovely stuff. Oh my. <laughs> Welcome thank you, thank to Danny Denobriga and Peter Wynn. Oh my word, it's so good to see you gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thanks for the dramatic entrance. We like that. <laughs> I think a lot of people just went giddy now and it's like, whoo, firefighters. <laughs> I know, it's fine. Look here, this is not for any sort of show. Uh, this is only for a very, very important cause, which is the volunteer for wildfire services, as well as just kind of focusing on this um, non-profit organization. Uh, these volunteer wildfire organizations, you know, they are so important. You know, they are the, the they're holding the, the fire and the fain bus. There's a connection over there, as you know. Peter Wynn is from the Newlands Operation yep. Manager. You are there. And of course, Danny Donobriga, one of the volunteer firefighters. It's great to have you in a feel good breakfast for show. Us. Thank you. Thanks, uh, but I mean, let's just start off quite simply in terms of the season itself. I mean, it must have been quite busy. I felt a a couple of hot days, and then I've seen a couple of flare-ups here and there. So, how has it been for you guys? So, so for us, it's been a bit. Of, it's been an average season so far. There hasn't been as many potentially long multi-day fires as we'd call them, but there has been a lot of smaller things. All right. Um, Particularly in Cape Town, um, on Table Mountain, there's been a lot of smaller things, but very quick, rapid response. Yes, um, yes. From, from, from Table Mountain National Parks, fire services as well. So, okay. um, very quickly. And then on the other side, in the Boyland areas, there have been some bigger fires so far. Nothing like the past couple of seasons as yet. Yes. Fire season's young. But there's still another two months left to go, month and a half left to go. And as you mentioned, there's been a lot of hot days so far this season. Some days feeling hotter than it has in the past. Um, so. We could still get interesting. Yeah. Well, interesting, interesting as you say. The, right? yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the only way we can actually yeah. put it, though. But I actually wanted to ask you about. I mean, you know, do you think that the the sort of the lower levels of fires that have been happening so far, do you attribute that to perhaps fire education? Do you think a lot of people are being a little bit more aware than they were, let's just say, a couple of years ago? P potentially, it is potentially that. Um, you know, people are more aware. There's there's that better drive on social media. You know, people are seeing that that education is coming out yes. a little bit more. Um, but also, it just depends on what's happening out there at the time. You know, some, some days, it depends when fires start. If it's a hot, windy day, they get big. Sometimes if it's a slightly cooler day. And as I say, the response has also been fantastic. A yeah. quick response, get a lot of small fires that most of the public don't even see before they're put out and they're done. You know, the public gets involved. They yes. see it when it's much bigger. And if it's dealt with really small, then it's a non-story, which is what we want. Indeed. In fact, uh, I actually hold that, that thought because I actually want to ask you about I know, what we do if we see some fire later. But, um, you know, Danny, I actually want to go to you on this because, I mean, you, you are a non-profit organization, so naturally fundraising is valuable to you. And you have all sorts of innovations that you have. One of them is a trail challenge. It's been two long years of COVID. You haven't been able to do it. Mm. Uh, tell me about how you are resurrecting this trail challenge once again and how we can get involved. Thanks. So, yeah, we're excited about the trail challenge. It's uh, now the 16th year that we're doing it. Awesome. Uh, been two years in the waiting, so keen to yeah, get out yeah, on the mountain. Yeah. Um, and like you said, I mean, the trail challenge for us as, a, as an organization is so key. It's one of our biggest uh, fundraising opportunities for the unit, and it helps us do what we do, uh, get PPE on, on, on our recruits and on our, our members. Um, and we want to thank the public for all of their support yeah. so far. It's been great. Um, but the trail challenge is something that's just really great. It's happening on the 15th of May. Uh, tickets are open. Uh, mm. They opened last week. Uh, we've had a great response so far. And this year, we, we want to make it a, um, a bit different in a sense. We're still running on, on the mountain, which is great. Uh, the views are spectacular. It's one of those, it's just one of those must-do races. Yeah. Uh, but mm. what we, we are going to be at Gardens Rugby Football Club, uh, the start and finish. Awesome. So we want to have a bit of a vibe afterwards. So uh, keep an eye on the mm. social, some cool stuff happening there. Bring the family, bring friends, stay on. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be lacking. I can tell you're a very passionate volunteer <laughs> firefighter. I can, you can just hear that, Peter. I'm sure you can hear yeah, that. Yeah. This, uh, not only for the party after the trail challenge, but also <laughs> uh, for being a, being a firefighter, which is beautiful. But I actually just wanted to know what made you become a volunteer firefighter. I mean, what was it? Because I know that many of you, you have other jobs. 
and now you have to do, you do this as well because you're passionate about it. So what was it that pulled you in and, and how do we get that passion in many others who could actually assist you guys in what you do? Yeah, we, we, we call it extreme gardening. Just, <laughs> you know, just to let you know. And, um, we, uh, so I guess for, for me, like there's so many different stories and it's always so nice when you, yeah. you kind of start out as a recruit and you're hiking with everybody, you kind of get everybody's stories. Yeah. For me, it's probably a case of playing with too much like fireman Lego as a kid. <laughs> and, Makes um, sense. But uh, no, I've, I mean, I, I, I grew up on the mountain, uh, always been passionate about the mountain, it's like as a lighty running around yeah. the mountain mm. and just being able to give back and, you know, help protect one of like, Cape Town's natural resources that is, you know, stunning and amazing and it's such a, a fulfilling thing and I, to, to be honest like we give a lot of our time but I feel like I've gotten so much back from the unit and its people it's really amazing mm. bunch of people that we've got. It's a family I can tell that when, when I, if I chat to any one of you guys it's always about the family I think that's the most beautiful thing if you are looking for that membership uh, perhaps a, a club to be part of but has a very very serious and amazing cause I think the volunteer wildfire services that's actually a great place to start but Peter mm. here's the big question if we see a small fire. You yep. said it's good when you, you know, stop it small. small. Yeah, yeah. Any quick tips you can give me just so that we know um, exactly what the so, process is? First of all, call it in. Yeah. You know, all too often we see on our socials that half an hour later someone's posted a fire, fire and put the at sign and you're like, you know, we're not following this on a daily, but yeah. hourly basis. So if you do see a fire, call it in. For Cape Town, it's the number's 107. Um, or nationally, it's 112. Phone and rather have 100 people call in the little fire then no one call it in and everyone think someone else is going to call that yes. in, you know. And don't go post on socials afterwards. Call it in first, don't post Good there advice. first, which is what happens, unfortunately. That's um, the greatest so advice no, you could have given. Yeah. There is that knee-jerk reaction with regard to social media, just like posting yeah, first yeah, exactly. and then That's call it. in, but 107 or 112, as you yeah, said. Yeah, there we go. You know, can I just say thank you so much on behalf of every single individual who has benefited from you guys really risking your lives for us. I just want to say thank you. So Danny Denobriga and Peter Wynn, thank you very much for thank joining you, us here you. today. We appreciate that. Apparently they'll be challenging us to a fire hose pool. We don't know what that is just yet, <laughs> but it's guaranteed to be hot. Stick with us, you feel good breakfast show.